Good morning, uh, Mr. Patrick King. Can you please identify you, the court reporter? Uh, yes, I am the court reporter. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. No problem.
May request for the call in user uh, with the number 724612 to identify, please. Uh, that is also uh, me, Patrick, the core reporter. I just have that backup line just in case my internet connection goes down. I appreciate that confirmation. Thank you very much. No problem.
Good morning, we're on the record. Good morning, everyone. As chairperson of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board for the District of Columbia in accordance with DC Code Section 2576 of the Open Meetings Act, I am welcoming you to the regular scheduled meeting of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. This meeting has been conducted pursuant to guidance made available by the District of Columbia's Office of Open Government regarding electronic meetings held by public bodies. Although the mayor's declared public emergency required expired February 15, 2022, public bodies may continue to meet remotely pursuant to the electronic meeting requirements of the OMA. Electronic meetings by the ABC board are also authorized under Title 25, 25-204.1. Pursuant to the OMA requirements, notice of today's meeting was provided 48 hours in advance of the meeting on ABRA's website and on the district's central meeting calendar. The notice included the time, date, agenda, and call-in or login information for public participation. This electronic meeting has been hosted by a WebEx account provided by the District of Columbia government. Please address any questions or complaints to the OOG at OpenGovOffice at dc.gov. My name is Donovan Anderson. I'm chairman of the board. I would like to introduce the other members of the ABC board who are also participating electronically pursuant to Mayor's Order 2022-007. Please respond when I announce your name, Mr. James Short. Mr. James Short, present. Mr. Bobby Cato. Bobby Cato, present. Ms. Rocky Crockett. Miss Jenny Henson. Jenny Henson present. And Mr. Edward Grandis. Edward Grandis present. The board has six members in attendance for the conduct of business today, and that constitutes a quorum. Before we get underway with today's hearing calendar, I need to make a few instructions very clear so that the conduct of these hearings is understood by everyone. There are six cases on this morning's calendar. Once the case is called, I will take a moment for our IT specialists to elevate the rights for each party to enable their camera and microphone. Then and only then will you have the ability to enable your equipment. If your case is not being heard, you will remain mute and your camera will be disabled. At the conclusion of each case, the parties will have the option to leave. If the party chooses to stay, all camera and microphone for the concluded case will be disabled. Should you have any questions or require technical assistance during the hearing, please submit them using the question and answer feature. Our first order of business today is a protest hearing status is case number 22, PRO 00004, Lydell, license number 119890. Ms. Washburn, can you please elevate the rights of the parties in this case? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Please stand by. Thank you. Commissioner Brown, your rights have been elevated. Sir Stephen O'Brien, your rights have been elevated, and uh, Manel Mahmoud, I do not see on the list. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, good morning. Mr. O'Brien. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like the parties please identify themselves for the record, please. Starting with the ANC, I'm sorry. Tiffany Brown. Um, T I F F A N Y, middle initial L, last name Brown, B R O W N. I am the chair of ANC 7B. I am also the single member um, commissioner for 7B L2. Good morning, Mr. O'Brien. Yes, uh, Stephen O'Brien uh, for the applicant, uh, Lidl. Uh, it's S T E P H E N, last name O apostrophe B R I E N. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Bri Mr. O'Brien, do you have a camera? Yes, um, I thought I had. How about yes. now? Yes, I can see you now. Um, I also would like to, for the record, to reflect. Um, at some point, I was an ANC commissioner in, in ANC 7B. 
And so while I was an ANC commissioner, I've not been an ANC commissioner in this ANC for over four years now. I did work with Ms. I did work with Ms. Um, commissioner Brown as an ANC commissioner. And I do, although this is not my single member district, but I do live in the vicinity where this, this um, supermarket potential licensee is located. However, based on, although I am, I'm familiar with the area, I, um, I, I know Commissioner Brown, I believe that my previous knowledge of Ms. Brown and knowing the area will not impact the decision that I can make in this case. I just want the record to reflect um, that my familiarity with, with the commissioner and also with the area, but I believe that I can make a, as I've always made decisions that are in the best interest overall for the residents of the District of Columbia. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Short. Yes, I would also like to go on the record as stating that I do live in the 7B um, in Hillcrest, Southeast Washington, D.C., have for the last 33 years, and that will have no bearing on my decision making involving this case. I can do this fairly and we'll do it fairly and in the best interest of all the citizens of the District of Columbia. Thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, I've stated my position. If, do you have anything you want to state for the record? Um, I, I certainly have no objection to the chair or uh, Chief Short uh, hearing this case. Uh, this is what the district is only 64 square miles. If physical proximity to a location uh, or grounds for disqualification, there'd be disqualifications in every single case that comes before the board. So uh, we certainly have no objection to um, the full board, including the chair and, and chief short hearing this case. I thank you, Mr. Mr. O'Brien, and part of the licensee. It was important enough for, for I want the record to reflect my, I, I, I normally don't have one of the things I've stated as living in Ward 7, one of the, at least in the area of Ward 7 that I live, I usually do not have to make these disclosures because we do not have many licensees, at least in, in my specific area. So it does shield me from from making these statements because, uh, because of the, the well, at least for me, for choice, by choice, that there are not necessarily a lot of licensees where I specifically live. All right. Are there any preliminary matters in this case that the parties wish to bring to the board? We'll start with you, Mr. O'Brien. No, sir. Ms. Brown. No. All right. All right. This matter then, if this matter goes to a hearing, it's scheduled for a show cause, I'm sorry, a protest hearing on April 6, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. Um, I just want to remind the parties that if this matter goes to a show cause, I'm sorry, what am I saying show cause, a protest hearing that each party um, is required to exchange documents and witnesses seven days prior to the, the, the hearing. If the party's failure to to disclose these documents to um, to each side and to the agency, the either side might be prevented from relying on documents or witnesses that um, that were not disclosed prior. And again, because these hearings are now doing virtually, each side is no each side will have one hour to present its case and you can have no more than five witnesses. If I can, I'm, I'm sorry, let me, one of the, hold on one minute, please. I wanna make sure that I'm reading the, no, if I will have no more than five witnesses, if this matter goes to a, a, a protest hearing. As I always do, I, the agency or the board supports the, the, the parties Settlement, have been settlement agreements. I, um, we support that and we prefer that if there's an agreement, at least both sides will leave happy rather than having the board make a decision because once the board makes a decision, one side might be happy, the other side might be unhappy. So the board always supports settlement in all of these protest matters. Are there any questions by either side? No, none from me. 
So bless that's you. All right. Then, if the matter is now settled, I will see you then on April 6th at 1 30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. you. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. All right, the next case in our calendar is case number 22 PRO 00005 church license number 119851. This case has canceled the board approved the settlement agreement. We'll be issuing a board order shortly on this case. The next case in the calendar is case number 22 PRO. 00006 Axum Restaurant License Number 119716. Can we can you please elevate the rights of the parties in this case, please? Please stand by. Adnich Gabrimasco, your rights have been elevated. Avon Escom, your rights have been elevated. That's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Abno Gabrimovsky, do you have a camera? Mr. or Ms. Gabrimovsky, are you there? Hello? Mr. and Ms. Gabrimovskill, are you there? Mr. and Mrs. Okay, you're there. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Could I would like the parties? Yeah, Hold on, please. Okay. I would like the parties to start off mm -hmm. next. Um, ma'am, do you have a camera? Do you have a camera you can turn on, ma'am? Hello, There you go. <laughs> Are you still there, ma'am? Ms. Gabrimovsky, are you there? All right, they're gone. So, Uh, Mr. Jane, can you look to see if if they have logged back on, please, since they have, they have now disappeared from my screen? Sure, Mr. Chair, uh, it's not showing on the attendee list. All right. All right, thank you. I believe that they, I, I'm hoping that they will try to, to log back in. I'm, I don't know what happened.
All right. It appears that it appears that the parties, at least the licensee, the licensee appeared this morning, and I'm not sure if there is an if we require an interpreter. So what we, what I'm what the board will do, we will continue this hearing for one week. Um, I know that you're there, Mr. Shum. I do apologize, but we're having some technical difficulties, and so what the here what the what the board will do, we will continue this, this matter for one week to March 16th at 9.30. We will, we, will, we will reach out to the licensee to see whether or not an interpreter is required. If one is required, we will provide one, but we will ensure that they will participate on next week, March 16th at 9.30. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. I have a good day then. All right, the next case on our calendar is case number 21-251-00018, Mirror Lounge, license number 111950. Mr. Dane, can you please elevate the right of the government and the licensee in, I'm sorry. I am, oh yeah, can you please elevate the rights of the licensee and the government in this case, please. Sure, please just stand by. Thank you. Sidon Johannes, your rights have been elevated. Kevin Lotus, your light rights have been elevated. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lutz, are you the are you the the government, sir? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. This is Kevin Lutz, uh, AAG, on behalf of the district. Okay. Good morning, sir. I wasn't that. I I'm not familiar with you, and I thought it was a different attorney, so I do apologize. All right. Good morning, everyone. And um, let's start off once <laughs> once again. So, Mr. Lutz, can you please spell and state your name for the for the record, please? Of course, uh, Kevin Lutz, that's K-E-V-I-N-L-U-T-E-S. Good morning. Ms. Johannes, can you please spell and state your name for the record, please? Good morning, Sidon Johannes on behalf of the licensee, and that is S-I-D-O-N-Y-O-H-A-N-N-E-S. Thank you. Are there any preliminary matters in this case? None that I'm aware of, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ioannis? No preliminary matters at this time. All right, thank you. Then this matter is scheduled for so far hearing on April 6, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. I just want to remind the parties that seven days before the hearing, each side is, each, each side is required to disclose the witnesses and documents that will be relied upon at the hearing. Those documents must be disclosed to each side and also to Abra legal. Any questions by anyone? No questions. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next case in our calendar is case number 21251-00009, assets license number 113585. This case has been canceled. The an OIC has been presented to the agency that the to the board and the board will consider it on its legal agenda this morning. The next case in our calendar is case number 19 AUD 00119 Shurid Madrid Restaurant, license number 60806. This case has been canceled. The government will be dismissing this matter. 
So that's the end of our calendar for the morning. And so therefore, let me do our legal agenda. The first matter on our legal agenda is a review of an offer in compromise in lieu of a hearing dated May, March 7th, 2022 for case number 21-251-00009, assets license number 113585. The offer in compromise is as follows. For charge one, failure to follow security plan, statutory authority, DC code section 25823A6, there'll be a fine of $2,000 to be paid within 120 days or the license will be suspended until the fine has been paid. Charge number two, failure to ensure cameras were operational, statutory authority, DC code section 25403E3G1. This, there, um, a warning will be issued and the ABRA investigator shall conduct a walkthrough of the establishment to ensure cameras are operational. I therefore, therefore make a motion that the OIC be accepted. Is there a second? Mr. Short, a second. Mr. Short, a second. The motion will now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Ms. Crockett, I agree. Ms. Henson. Penny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Grandis, I agree. The matter passed 6 0 0. Number two on our legal agenda is a review of the applicant's request to extend protest petition deadline dated March 2nd, 2022, with the consent of the ANC. This is for Lemont Royal, license number 120509. I make a motion that we act, approve the request. Is there a second? Ed Grandis will second. Mr. Grandis will second the motion along with Ms. Crockett. Uh, Ms. Crockett, please turn up your microphone. Your, your voice is very faint, please. Um, will, um, so Mr. Grandis and Ms. Crockett will second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Co Ms. Crockett. Coffee Crockett, I agree. Thank you. Ms. Henson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Grandis, I agree. The matter passed 6 0 0. Number three on our legal agenda, agenda the review of a settlement agreement date March, March 1st, 2022, between Advisory Neighbor Commission 2F, the Shaw DuPont Citizens Association, and a group of five or more individuals. and Aslin Beer Company, license number 118555. I make a motion that we approve the settlement agreement. Is there a second? Mr. Short, a second. Mr. Short, a second. The motion will now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Henson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Mr. Grandis. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 6 0 0. Number four, review of the motion for reconsideration of an order affirming summary suspension dated February 24th, 2022, in case number 22 CMP 00006 in the big board license number 087398. The board will have oral arguments on this case and that's scheduled for March 9th, 2022 at 1 30 p.m. Number five, review of the government's motion to enlarge deadline to file a response date in March 3rd, 2022 in case number 22 CMP 0006 in the big board license number 087398. I make a motion that that the board ap approves. This is there a second. Mr. Short, a second. Mr. Short, a second. The motion will now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rocky Crockett, I agree. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis agrees. 
and Mr. Anderson agree the matter passed 600. We now move to our licensing agenda. The first matter on the licensing agenda is the review application to extend safekeeping of license. This is for 1720 Club, license number 015251. I make a motion that we approve this request through September 31st, 2022. Is there a second? Edward Grandis will second. Mr. Grandis will second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Mr. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number two in our licensing agenda review application for the carrier and delivery endorsement. This is for Jamaica. Jamaica license number 117384. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett seconds the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number three on our licensing agenda, review application for the carrier and delivery endorsement. This is Charlie Palmer Steak, license number 060654. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Edward Grandis will second. Mr. Grandis will second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. We now move to our supplemental license and agenda. The first matter on our supplemental license and agenda is a review application for stipulated license with letter of NC support for a new ABC license. This is for Yervan, Y E R E V A N. License number 120217. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett, I second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number two on our supplemental license agenda is review application for stipulated license with letter of ANC support for a new ABC license. This is for Whiskey Shop DC, license number 120535. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett has second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number three, review of a letter from Richard Bianco, Esquire, on behalf of the property owner of 7421 Georgia Avenue North West. This is for cork and bottle wine and spirits. Life is number 089012. This is just an FYI for the board. Number four, review request for approval to provide a gift of a Carlsberg bicycle that doesn't exceed $500 in value to Irish Channel Restaurant. Our license number is 060298. The request has been made by Legends Distrib Distributing of Washington, D.C. License number 01. 091433. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett, I second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Ms. Crockett, I apologize. Bobby Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number five, review request for approval to, pr to provide a gift of 16 ounce pint glasses that do not exceed $500 in value to Irish Channel Restaurant, license number 060298. This request is from 
is being made by a wholesaler, Legends Distribution, distributed in off Washington, D.C., license number 091433. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Mr. Shorter, second. Mr. Shorter, second. The motion um, will now have a roll call vote in the motion, Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Mr. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number six on our supplemental license agenda is a request to approve a temporary move to a different storage unit, Suite 200, of the same license premises due to the landlord engaging in construction of the building and license approved unit. This is um, the duration is uh, up to 120 days. The request is being made from Silver Sauce license number 119892. I make a motion that we approve this request. Is there a second? Edward Grandis will second. Mr. Grandis will second. The motion will now have a roll call vote. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Grandis, I agree. You have matter passed 600. We now move to our cancellation agenda. The ABC board will be canceling the license for the reasons outside uh, outlined. Um, declaration license number 099556, the licensee request cancellation. And Lazy Kate's Bist Bistro license number 112314, the licensee requ requested cancellation. And I make a motion that the ABC board therefore grant the request to cancel the license. Is there a second? Mr. Short, I second. Mr. Short, I second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Henson. Jenny Hansen, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed 600. All right. We now move to our temporary license and one day substantial docket. And I'm going to read the first 11 um, applicants on this docket after going through the first 11. I'll ask, I'll make a motion that ABC board grants the request. So the first one is for, as a request from Sean Galera. This is for one day license class F. This is for rehearsal dinner for uh, May 13, 2022. The hours are from 7 to 11 p.m. The license number is 120612 with 100 attendees to security guard. Number two is a request from Shagan Simi Pagan. So the spelling is S H A H G H A S E M I. The last name is P E G A N. E-G-A-H, I'm sorry, for one day license class F. This is for a cultural event. This is on March 13, 2022. The license number is 120713, and this is for 700 attendees. The next request, a request from Laura C. Calderon for one day license class G. This is for a fundraiser on March 14, 2022. The license number is 120585 with 350 attendees. Number four is a request from Robert Jordan for one day license class G. This is a social event. This is on March 11th, 2022. The license number is 120717. This is for 150 attendees. Number five is a request from Kelvin Glim. This is a one day license class G. This is a birthday party previously, birthday previously approved by the ABC board on April 24th, 2020. So this is the date of the event is April 23rd, 2022. The license number is 116758 with 285 attendees. Number six is a request from Maria Murphy, a one day license class G. This is for an event, the Queen's Ball. 
the date of the event is March 30th through March 31st. March 30th through March 31st, March 31st through April 1st, and April 1st through April 2nd, 2022. The license number is 120739. The attendees is not to exceed 100 attendees throughout the duration of the event. Number seven is another request from the Queen's Ball. The, the Queen's Ball, the date of this event is April 3rd, 2022. The license number is 120740. Again, not to exceed 1900 attendees to attend for the duration of the event. Number six is another, number eight is another request from Maria Murphy, one day license class G. The Queen's Ball, this date of the event is April 5th through April 6th, April 6th through April 7th, 2022. License number is 120741. Um, the attendees not to exceed 100, 1,900 attendees to attend for the duration of the event. Number nine is a, another request from Maria Murphy, the Queen's Ball. This event is April 13th through April 14th, April 14th through April 15th, April 15th through April 16th, 2022. The license number is 170742. Uh, 1,900 attendees not to exceed not to exceed 1,900 attendees throughout the duration of the event. Number 10 is another request from Maria, Marla, Maria Murphy, one day license class G. The event, the Queen's Ball. The date of the event is April 8th through April 9th, April 9th through April 10th, 2022. The license number is 120743. The, um, not, to exceed, not to exceed 1,900 attendees to attend throughout the duration of the event. Number 11 is another request from Maria Murphy, a one day license class to G, the Queen's Ball, date of the event April 12, 2022, license number is 120743, not to exceed 1900 attendees for the attend for the duration of the event. I therefore make a motion that ABG Board approve these if, um, licenses. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett a second. The motion will now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Mr. Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Ms. Grandis, I agree. The matter passed 600. Number 12 on this docket is a request from CH Management Corporation for pub crawl. This is a Margarita March pub crawl. Excuse me, the date of the event is March 30th and May 1st, 2022. The license number is 105025. The substantial change license number is 22SC00557. This is for Penn Quarters and up and down China, Chinatown area to 6th and 7th Street. I therefore make a motion that the ABC board um, grants the request for 1,000 attendees. Is there a second? Ed Grandis will second. Mr. Grandis will second the motion. We'll now have a roll call vote. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I do not agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The matter passed five to one. Number 13, uh, it's a request from Regmore Holdings Inc. This is for pub crawl one day substantial change. And this is a, this is a pub crawl for, from Regmore Promotions for May 7th, 2022. I make a motion that we approve 1,000. I don't believe that the board needs to vote on this. This, this was already conditionally approved on January 26, 2022 for 1,000 participants. So either I make a motion that the board um, up, up, approve the, the 1,000 that was previously approved. Again, I think they'd ask for an increased number, but uh, the motion is for is for one thousand for it to remain at one thousand. Is there a second? 
Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett seconds. The motion will have a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Short. Short, I disagree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rocky Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Mr. Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Grandis, I agree. The matter passed five to one for, for the number to remain at 1,000. All right, thank you. All right, we now move to our license administrative docket. On our license administrative docket, there are 11 applicants. I will read the name of all 11 applicants at the end of the list. I'll make a motion that the ABC board approves these requests. So the first request, a request made from Nana Ethiopian Restaurant, license number 100407. They are retailer C Tavern, corporate name change application. The new name is Sina, S-I-N-A-L-L-C. Number two, um, requests from the Gorman Grill, license number 117596, their retail C restaurant, change trade name change application. The new name is Taco City DC third. Number three, a request from ROI, A-R-O-I Thai Cuisine, license number 09174, their retail C restaurant. It's a letter of request to remove officer Antonius Munaba as director. Number four is a request from the Andrew Keegan Theater C, license number 098780, their retailer CX multipurpose facility, change of officer application to remove, change of officer application to add Alexis J. Hartwick. Number five is a request from Caitlin Lockett. This is for a personal importation permit application. The license number is 22 IMP 00004. Number six is a request, another request for a personal importation permit application from Kenneth Warford. The, the license number is 22 IMP 00005. Number seven is a request from the Ocean Lounge, license number 114106. It's at their retailer C Tavern. It's a stipulated license application. Number seven, eight is a request from Trini Vibez, V Y B E Z, license number 119991, Cater license new ABC license application. Number nine is a request from Spirits and Spice, license number 120009, a retailer, a liquor store, new ABC license application. Number 10, a request from Take Your Pick Liquors, license number 120147, retailer, a internet, new license, new ABC license application. Number 11, a request from Farm Bird, license number 120. 0165 Retailer C Restaurant, new ABC license application. I therefore make a motion that the ABC board grants approve these requests. Is there a second? Mr. Short, a second. Mr. Short, a second. The motion will now have a, a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rocky Crockett, I agree. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Ms. Grandis, I agree. The matter passed 600. We're now at the end of our morning calendar and our morning agenda items. I would like to thank all members of the public who participated in our hearings this morning and for our, our ABC board mem members who participated. The board then will be in recess until 1.30 this afternoon. I then I now ask all board members to return to executive session for further action. Good morning and thank you very much.
Good afternoon, Patrick. I just want to confirm if you're online.
Hi, Patrick, can you kindly confirm that you can hear me? Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, good, good afternoon, everyone. We're back on the record. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon session of the Alcohol and Beverage Control Board. My name is Donovan Anderson. I'm chairman of the board. Joining us this afternoon are five other board members and Mr. James Short, 
Mr. Bobby Cato, Ms. Rafi Crockett, Ms. Jenny Henson, and Mr. Edward Grandis. The board has six members in attendance today for the conduct of business, and that constitutes a quorum. Because we, before we get on the way, with today, with this afternoon's hearing calendar, I need to make a few instructions very clear so that the conduct of these hearings is understood by everyone. There are four cases on our afternoon's calendar. Once your case is called, I will take a moment for IT specialists to elevate the rights for each party to enable their camera and microphone. And then and only then will you have the ability to enable your equipment. If your case has not been heard, you'll remain mute and your camera will be disabled. At the conclusion of each case, the parties will have the option to leave. If the party chooses to stay, all cameras and microphones for the concluded case will be disabled. Should you have any questions or require technical assistance during the hearing, please submit them using the question and answer feature. The first case that's scheduled our afternoon hearing is a fact finding here in case number 21251 Focus DC, license number 118015. This case has been continued to March 23rd, 2022 at 10.30 a.m. The next case in our calendar is case number 22 CMP 00006, the big board, license number 87398. Mr. Jani, can you please, Mr. Jane, can you please elevate the rights of the government and the licensee and its license and its and their representative in this case, please? Sure. Please stand by, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Patrick Strawberry, your rights have been elevated. David Rosenthal, your rights have been elevated. Robert, your rights have been elevated. Walter Adams, your rights have been elevated. Anthony Sallow, your rights have been elevated. Jenica Jordan, I see here James Jordan. Are you related to this case? Uh, I have to, no, okay. And then uh, investigator Kevin. Uh, are there any, I'm sorry, are there anyone missing? Is, um, I would like to ask both parties have the rights of all the parties been elevated? Is there someone, someone else who needs the party in this case who whose rights have not been elevated? Uh, this is Patrick Strawbridge uh, on behalf of the big board. Um, this is this is all the people we have at this time. I think as the, the board will hear, we have a proposed way of proceeding that I don't think will require the applicant's in-person participation. He is standing by if necessary, although he does not have a working video uh, option, but hopefully that won't be necessary, subject to the board's agreement. Um, the the licensee doesn't have to participate because since uh, you you are their representative, I will just make it clear, try to make sure that that everyone who needs to be here is here today. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. In that, in that case, we are we are all here. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I guess as I stated before, this is the case for the big board. And I, let me have the parties introduce themselves for the record, starting with the government. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, Walter Adams representing the district. Good afternoon, Anthony Sello, also representing the district. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, could everyone also spell your name for the record, please? Um, it makes it easy for the, for, for the court reporter. Uh, for, for me, Walter Adams, W-A-L. T-E-R, and Adams, A-D-A-M-S. 
and for Assistant Attorney General Anthony Sello, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-C-E-L-O. -O. The licensee? Yes, for the licensee, Patrick Strawbridge, S-T-R-A-W-B-R-I-D-G-E. I see some other, uh, there are some others. Um, you're on mute, sir. David Rosenthal for the licensee as well. David, D-A-V-I-D, Rosenthal, R-O-S-E-N-T-H-A-L. And also Robert Alt for the licensee, R-O-B-E-R-T, A-L, last name A-L-T. Thank you. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. All right, today's status, Today's status hearing was scheduled at the request of the Office of the Attorney General. Made yesterday to the Board's Office of the General Counsel in anticipation of the, the parties presenting an offer in compromise. This morning, when the Board learned that an offer in compromise might not materialize, the Board converted the status hearing to oral arguments on the respondent's motion for reconsideration of the Board's order on summary suspension. It is now our understanding that the parties may have an alternative preliminary matter. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, yes, I, I have some opening statements and I received sure. another text message, another email, and there goes my opening statement. But it's my understanding that there there might be an alternative preliminary matter. So would the parties please ad, uh, address who wants to be, is that you, Mr. Adams, want to uh, inform the board? Where are we with yes. this case? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, th first of all, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I wanna thank you very much for um, being so prompt and putting this matter on onto the board's agenda. Obviously it's a very, important matter dealing with the, the, the summary suspension that's been in place for the big board um, over the last uh, few weeks. Um, so we're, this is where we are, Mr. Chairman, uh, is that the parties have been working in good faith to resolve this case. And at this point, um, where we are is that there we are have a tentative agreement really on the substantive terms for off to for to be able to make an offer and compromise to the board. However, there are still some minor details that are necessary to be um, ironed out prior to us being able to presenting an OIC. So unfortunately, we're not able to present the OIC today. What we are requesting jointly is that there be a one week extension. There was a there was a deadline that uh, for last Thursday for the district to to submit its opposition to the respondent's motion for reconsideration. And uh, after that, we asked for uh, two extensions for that, but we're asking that that be extended by one week as well as a one week extension of, of today's proceeding, um, by which time we believe that, that we will be able to resolve this. What we anticipate is that we'll be able to present the OIC prior to uh, next week's uh, agenda or next week's calendar, hopefully within the next two or three days. And upon that time, we will immediately uh, provide an indication to the board with the details uh, of that offer and compromise. However, unfortunately, because of those minor but necessary details, we just aren't able to present that to today to the board. Mr. Strawbridge, your position on, on, on what Mr. Adams has presented. Yes, thank you. And, and I also extend my appreciation to the board for its prompt attention to this matter, as well as to the government, who I think we have had you know, a very positive exchange with over the last week that we've been talking. There were some questions that needed to be answered. As you may be aware, new counsel has been involved in the case, and we need to, to, to straighten out a couple of things that had previously happened in the case. Um, you know, I am optimistic that uh, that we are we are close to being able to reach agreement on a language, and so we join in the request. All right, so we're so the board has been asked to because what was when I read our legal agenda today, 
um, the legal agenda stated that we were going to have oral arguments on respondents motion and so the board was prepared to move forward to make a decision. Um, I know that the office of the attorney general had requested an extension of time to file a response and that was granted. But I just want to make sure that both parties are now asking us to a joint continuance for one week for an OIC to be presented that will dispose of all the issues that's alive in this case. Is that that's that's the motion that's been made? In part, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's, uh, it's in part to move uh, for one week to for this hearing by one week, but also to extend the deadline for a district to um, to file a response to the motion for reconsideration. Because we had your previous motion, Mr. Adams, you had requested a motion, an extension of time. Um, and what was that timeline? Because I know the board on our legal agenda had granted that this morning. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to find. Out. Is this a step? Is this an additional extension, or was it the, the previous extension that you you, you had requested? No, uh, you are correct. It would be an additional extension from what we already requested. We requested until. Uh, Tuesday, uh, and now we're requesting that it be extended until next next Wednesday. All right. Before before making a, 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 a motion for the board, I want the parties to be. Um, I noticed that we were prepared to move forward this afternoon, and this is a, a joint extension that's been requested by both sides. So the board, it, 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 the board, it, it's not this is this is not the board's decision. Both parties are asking us to, to continue this matter for a week. The board, I'm going to recommend to the board that the extension be granted. However, the board is unlikely to issue or consider any further continuances because we need to bring closure to this, this matter. So that's that I just want to let the, the, the parties know that we are unlikely the board would be, would 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 not look on an additional continuance favorable because we were prepared today to move forward in making a decision on the motion that was filed by respondent with that and and it's also the boards i know that um you say to mr adams that it's apparently that maybe if you're asking for a week's extension and that i um and OIC might be pre presented to the board prior to that date, but I I think because of the the posture of this case and the public nature of this case that it's preferable that any OIC that's reached that it, it be presented in public session at a hearing next week, so it can be presented, but I I think based on the posture of this case and the nature of this case that we have an OIC presented on the record so we can have arguments and the public can be um, aware of the decisions that are being made regarding this entity. All right. So any questions by any side before I make a, I'm going to make a motion for the board's consideration. No questions by district and I'll say that the district certainly understands the, the board's uh, posture. Uh, Mr. Strawbridge. Same for the applicant or, or the licensee. All right, thank you. With that said, I make a motion that the joint motion be granted for a one week extension to have this uh, a continuation of this case until I'm sorry, let me make sure of that until March from March 16th at March 16th at uh, at uh, one thirty. Is there a second? Mr. Short, a second. second. Mr. Short and Mr. Grant is a second. The motion will now have a roll call vote on the motion, Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Robbie Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. The vote has the board has now voted to to grant the one week continuation. Um, thank you for your presentation today. Good luck in your um, continued negotiations, and we will see you one week from today. Um, possible with an OIC to address this issue. All right. Thank you very much. And Thank you. Thank you.
before but, the our next case, and I'm just going to go a little bit out of order. Our next case in our calendar is case number 21, CMP 00058, Apero DC, license number 116925. This case has been cancelled. The government has dismissed the case. So our last case in our calendar is case number 21, CMP 00060, Empire Lounge, license number 110702. Uh, Mr. Jane, can you please elevate the rights of the parties in this case, please? Please stand by, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Richard Bianco, your rights have been elevated. Adam Michelle, your rights have been elevated. John Fiorentin, your rights have been elevated. And James Jordan, your rights have been elevated. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is the Ashoka hearing for Empire Lounge. So let's have the parties introduce them for the record. For the record, let's start with the government. Please tell us state your name for the record, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, James Jordan on behalf of the district. That's J A M E S J O R D A N. Good afternoon, Mr. Jordan. Um, who is with you this afternoon, sir? Uh, today, uh, investigator Adam Mitchell and supervisory investigator J John Fiorentine are with me. All right, thank you. Mr. Mitchell, can you please tell us state your name for the record, please? Yes, it's Adam Mitchell, A D A M M I T C H E L L. Good afternoon, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Florentine, can you please spell and state your name for the record, please? You're on, you're on mute, sir. John, J O H N, Fiorentine, F as in Frank, I O R R E N T I N E. And, and what's, your, what's, what's your role with the agency, sir? I am a supervisory investigator. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mr. Bianco. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the board. My name is Richard Bianco, last name spelled B I A N C O. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. And who's with you, Mr. Bianco? Uh, my client is not with me. Just me. All right. Thank you. Are there? Are right, good afternoon, everyone. This is a show about here in status. I'm sorry. It's a show about here in the Garden Empire Lounge. And so, Mr. Jordan, are there any preliminary matters in this case? And there are no preliminary matters at this time, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Bianco, are there any preliminary matters in this case? Uh, nothing from the licensee. Now, Mr. Bianco, this is a show cause hearing status. And I'm just trying to, I'm sorry, it's a show cause hearing. And I'm just trying to get some clarification. I see that you're not calling any witnesses. And of course, as an attorney, you cannot testify as an attorney. So why are we having a hearing if, if the, if we have no witnesses to testify on behalf of the licensee. Sure, Mr. Anderson, I'm happy to address that. As, uh, as you know, it's the government's burden to prove by clear and convincing evidence that one of the alcohol laws of the District of Columbia has been violated based on my review of the uh, investigative report. Uh, they can't make that burden and they can't make that burden on the facts. They also can't make it on the law. My um, my case will largely focus on a legal argument, um, uh, which will somewhat depend on what facts the agency puts on. But regardless of how they put it on, we have a legal argument with respect to the statute. We will likely, depending on how things go, be asking to brief that because it is does involve an issue of statutory interpretation that could get a little complex. Um, but that's how we intend to proceed. We're not going to put on any any. Witnesses, we're going to put the government to its proof and make a legal argument thereafter. All right, fine. All right, thank you. All right, so Mr. Jordan, do you wish to make an opening statement? Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson and board members. We are here today in the show cause matter for Empire DC LLC, trading as Empire Lounge. Located at 1909 9th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C., 
The show cause notice issued in this matter concerns the charge that the licensee played music at such an intensity that it was heard in a premises outside of the licensed establishment in violation of DC code section 25725A. The facts will establish that on Wednesday, October 27th, 2021, Alcoholic Beverage Regulation Administration investigators John Fiorentine and Adam Mitchell visited the establishment and determined that it played music at such an intensity it could be heard outside. At approximately 10.45 p.m., Supervisory Investigator Fiorentine received a complaint through the Abra hotline concerning noise coming from the licensed establishment. Alongside Investigator Mitchell, she traveled to 1909 9th Street to verify that complaint. Outside of the establishment, Investigator Mitchell identified a heavy bass emanating from the establishment. The investigators visited the complainant's home and verified the noise could be heard. The investigators then visited the establishment to advise the owner of the violation. Today, you'll hear from both Investigator Mitchell and Supervisor Investigator Fiorentine. They will explain the investigation, beginning with the hotline complaint and ending with the contact with the establishment. They will explain that noise complaints are always two investigator jobs, so the agency is sure of where noise is emanating from. At the end of this hearing, the government will request that the board apply a penalty consistent with DC code section 25830. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jordan. Can I, can I, I want to ask all members who are participating today, if you're not speaking, please mute your microphone, please. To everyone who's online, if you're not speaking, when you're not speaking, please mute your microphone. Uh, Mr. Bianca, do you wish to make an opening statement or you will defer until later on? Uh, I'll make a very brief opening statement. Our position in this matter is that the government cannot meet the high burden of clear and convincing evidence on two fronts. They're not going to be able to show based on the evidence that they present that there was a uh, noise that can be heard inside of a residence that was emanating from the licensee's establishment. Second, they are not going to be able to establish by clear and convincing evidence that any noise that may have been heard inside of the residence constitutes a violation of DC code 25725. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bianco. Mr. Jordan, um, your first witness. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairperson, uh, the district would call investigator Adam Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, can you raise your right hand, please? You swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. Your witness, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, investigator Mitchell, where are you currently employed? DC's Alcoholic Beverage Regulation Administration. And what is your position there? I'm an investigator. All right. And how long have you been an investigator? Uh, two years and three months, about. Okay. And what are your responsibilities in this role? To conduct investigations and inspections of ABC licensed establishments within the District of Columbia. And are you familiar with the establishment? We are here uh, to discuss today. Yes. How are you familiar with Empire Lounge? On October 27th, uh, myself and supervisory investigator Fiorentine um, substantiated a noise complaint coming from that establishment. How did you receive that complaint? That came through the Abra hotline. And after coming through the hotline, what did the agency uh, do with this complaint? So that's I've Fiorentine. He receives those calls. He mans that phone on our shift. Um, he then asked for my assistance to assist him in going to that residence and substantiating that the noise could be heard inside. And when you substantiate a noise complaint, what goes into that investigation? Uh, there has to be multiple investigators to go to confirm that it's not just one person hearing it, it's more than one. Um, so we would enter the residence, all the windows and doors would be closed. Um, if we can hear the music coming in or bass or anything, then we'd investigate further to identify where it's coming from. Um, and then that's basically it. And for this investigation, uh, what did you do? So we went to uh, the residence was on 8th Street, so we went to 8th Street first. Um, 
There's a few alleys between 8th and 9th Street. We heard some music from the alley on 8th. Um, at that point, we didn't know where it was coming from because we weren't actually on the alley between 8th and 9th. We were just on the 8th Street entrance to one of the side alleys. Um, we then got the complaint to come outside. Uh, he agreed to let us into his residence, went to the residence, um, went into one bedroom. The windows were closed. We heard bass coming in. It was pretty heavy. Um, he then showed us another room in the back. It was another bedroom. And there, the windows in that one had a door. The windows and doors were closed. Again, same thing. Music and bass was heard inside. Um, from there, we exited to the rear of their um, condo building onto the alley between 8th and 9th. And that's where we could really hear the loud music coming um, from the building directly behind theirs, which was 1909 9th Street. And how do you know that that was Empire Lounge? Empire Lounge, their address is 1909 9th Street. And um, on the rear of their building, on the second level next to the door, there's an address plate that, that reads 1909. Okay. And did you visit the establishment after the complaint and home? Yeah, after the complaint, um, we verified that. Then we went around to 9th Street. Um, we spoke with the doorman outside and asked for the owner, ABC manager, to come out. The owner came out. We advised him of the complaint, that we substantiated it. Uh, he said he understood. Uh, he'd lower it and ensure that any windows or doors upstairs would be closed. Um, but that he did say that he thought all the windows and doors were closed, but he would double check. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, permission to share my screen? Mr. Jenning, can you please allow Mr. Jordan to share his screen, please? Please go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Chairperson, I'm going to show what has been marked as Government Exhibit 1. Sure, go ahead, please. Investigator Mitchell, um, can you identify this document? Yeah, it looks like the case report for this case. Okay, and um, can you explain what a case report is? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, on behalf yeah, of the applicant, we, we consent to the admissibility of this document. We don't need to go through the authentication process. We're good. Well, I, I appreciate that, Mr. Bianco. I appreciate that. But again, this is also part of the the board's record that it doesn't have to be formally moved into evidence. So that's fine. Go ahead. All right. Thank you for uh, that. Go ahead, Mr. Jordan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson and Mr. Bianco. Uh, go, uh, we'd like to confirm that government's exhibit one is in evidence. It, it's the, the document, it will it automatically in evidence. For, it doesn't have to be moved into evidence officially because it is it is a it is a part of the the board's record. So pursuant to statute, it is it is a, a part of our record that will be considered. But so if you want to ask the, the witness questions about the document, you're free to do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. And investigator Mitchell, um, are there any attachments to your case report? Yeah, there was two exhibits, a uh, board order and then the settlement agreement for the establishment. Okay. And no further questions, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Yeah. Um, Ms. Mr. Bianco, any questions? Uh, yes, I do have a few um, a few questions. Uh, investigator, uh, I'm looking at your report specifically on page one, uh, where you talk about the complaint call uh, coming in. And the sentence that I'm looking at reads, the complainant provided his address, which was verified as lying within a res residentially zoned area based on the DC zoning maps. And what my question is, is whether you did that verification or somebody else did. That would have been supervisory investigator for you, Great. Thank you very much. Um, 
moving on. Uh, after the fact, after you, uh, I'm sorry, this is your report, correct? So you wrote this? Yes. Okay. So after the fact, did you do anything with respect to verifying uh, the zoning of this particular address? No. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the, a little bit about the um, methodology that you went through to determine that this was a violation. If I understood your testimony correctly, you first stood in the alley behind the establishment at about 11 p.m., according to your report, and then you went up to the unit and could hear music inside at approximately 11.05 p.m., correct? The alley, uh, the initial alley we were in actually is on the entrance of 8th Street, so it's not directly behind any of the establishments. Um, so that would be the clarification on that. We weren't behind the establishment. It was an alley that would lead to the alley that runs between 8th and 9th, but it's the, it's an entrance and exit to the alley on 8th Street. Okay. And both you and Investigator Fiorentine were together in the alley, correct? Yes. Okay. And then both you and Investigator Fiorentine went inside of the residence, correct? Yes. Okay. And as I understand the setup here, the residence that we're talking about is an apartment or a condominium unit. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And what floor, if you recall, is the condominium unit on? It's the lowest level. I'm not sure um, how they label their floors. We did have to walk down a few steps. Um, I don't know if they would consider that one or the basement. So, but it was the lowest one we could get into. Okay. Um, and once both you and investigator Fiorentine were standing inside of the unit, how is it that you confirmed that the noise you heard was emanating from the licensee? So the two rooms that we were able to hear the noise coming in from, um, it was heavy bass coming in. So one of the rooms, like I said earlier, they had a they had an exit door out the back. So we went out the back, up a couple steps onto the back parking pad area, um, which led, it's directly behind 1909 9th Street. Um, and the way the music was coming down, it appeared um, coming from the upper level. So that's kind of, the first two levels are, say, the same they're combined and then there's a roof on the second level that goes back to the third level so we couldn't really see the third level but the noise was coming over the second level down and kind of into that alley from 1909 9th street that we identified by the address plate on the second level okay um so are you familiar with the 1900 block of 9th street somewhat yes okay um, do you have occasion to go there? Did, have you had occasion to go there in your capacity as an investigator over the last two and a half years? Yes. And would you agree that there is a um, dense, dense um, uh, population of licensed establishments on that block? Yes. Okay. And a number of those establishments face this alley between 9th and 8th Street. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and there's at least three or four that are immediately adjacent to 1909 9th Street, correct? Yep. Okay, are you familiar with the Ambassador Restaurant next door at 1907 9th Street? Uh, somewhat. Okay. Uh, how about Cortez at 1905? I don't believe I've been to that establishment, now. Okay. From where you were standing in the alley, could you see any of the uh, adjacent establishments, whether they had a uh, summer garden or roof deck facing the alley? No. Okay. Um, did you at any point determine whether the adjacent establishments were playing the same type of music as the licensee? No, we only visited the 
1909 9th Street. Yeah. So Empire Lounge. Okay. And you entered from the 8th Street side, so you wouldn't have had occasion to walk past any of those adjacent establishments. Is that correct? Uh, we did walk down 9th Street um, whenever we came to go make notification. Uh, we actually did walk the block because we didn't come through the alley. We parked on um, the next street over. I can't recall right now. Um, but And then walked up 9th Street. So. Okay. But that was on the front side of 9th Street, not the alley side, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Any questions by any board, any board members? No board, no questions by any board members. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, all right. Let me ask a question, Mr. Mr. Mitchell. Um, do you know whether or not the with with the ambassador lounge? Do you know whether or not they were playing music? No. I'm sorry. They. I'm sorry. Were they playing music, or do you know, not know? I'm just trying to find out. Were, do you know whether that music? I do not know. You don't know. What about the Cortez establishment? Do you know if they were playing any music? No, I do not know. So how are you sure that the music that was being played was coming from the Empire Lounge? It appeared that it was coming from the upper level, the third level of Empire Lounge, just from how loud it was and it, the way it was coming. It seemed like it was just coming right over the roof of the second level and down into the alley. Um, that was our observations there. You're saying it seems, but you're not. What do you mean by it seems that it was coming from the third level? I mean, it, this, it can't be it seems. It has to be, was it coming from there? You perceive it's coming from there? Or that's what I'm trying to find out. Yeah, so we were right behind that building, um, and the noise was coming. There was no noise coming from the sides. Um, it was coming straight over the roof and down is what it, that's what we perceived there. So. Now, when you were in the residence, was it the same music that, was, that you, you're hearing in the residence that you heard in the Empire Lounge, or is it just you heard noise in the, in, in the residence and you also heard noise at Empire Lounge. Do you know was it the same exact music that you were hearing? Yeah, it was the same. So as soon as we opened the back door and went out, it just got louder, but it was the same music. It was the same music we heard from the exit in the door to in their back parking area to in the alley behind their establishment. Oh, when you said the same music, is it the same song or the same beat? Or, or are you saying, is it, what, what is it where you're hearing? I couldn't make out lyrics, but it was just heavy bass, the beat. Thank you. Any any, any questions by any other board members? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Grandin. May I? Yes, Thank, sir. You. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, um, had you been out of, prior to this evening, have you been out to investigate other noise violations? Yes. Had you ever been called to uh, this particular establishment in the past regarding a noise violation? No, not this one. And in your training, um, just explain to, to me a bit how you're trained to determine whether the noise is coming from a particular establishment. <clears throat> there's different ways. Uh, there's always multiple investigators. Um, on this one, we had two, um, but sometimes you need three if you had to go inside the establishment to verify the noise and lyrics. Um, in this case, SI Fiorentine and myself, we didn't feel the need for that because of how loud it was and where we heard it coming from, from directly behind that building. So was there another in, in investigator out that evening at this location? No, it was just two of us that night. But who, who were the second one? Supervisory investigator for your team. Okay. And um, how was this? How was this uh, music amplified? Is that much? Were, were there speakers in in the establishment? We did make entrance into the establishment. The owner met us out front. You did not go into the establishment. That's correct. So how do you know what kind of music they were playing? 
just from what we heard coming from the upper level into the alley in the back. And was that a was that a band, a DJ? What what were you told? I can't recall what what he said. He was just having music. Having music. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Any questions by any board members? Mr. Bianca, any questions based on the questions that the board asked? No, Mr. Chair. Mr. Jordan, any redirect? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Mr. Mitchell, thank you very much for your testimony. You are excused. Mr. Jordan, you have another witness. Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, the district calls Supervisory Investigator John Fiorentine. Mr. Fiorentine, can you please raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Your witness, sir. Thank you. Uh, investigator Fiorentine, where are you currently employed? I'm a Supervisory Investigator with the Alcoholic Beverage Regulation Administration. And how long have you been a Supervisory Investigator? Uh, for approximately three years. And what are your responsibilities in this position? I am a team supervisor responsible for conducting inspections and investigations within the District of Columbia. And I also am the program manager for the noise control program. Okay. And so as program manager for the noise control program, how many of these noise violations have you responded to? Personally, I have responded to approximately a dozen, but I have coordinated uh, noise enforcement operations uh, in the hundreds. Okay. And are you familiar with the establishment uh, in this case? I am familiar with the establishment. And how are you familiar with this establishment? I'm familiar with this establishment due to the uh, noise complaint that was made, uh, followed up, and substantiated by myself. Okay. Um, could you tell us about that night, uh, beginning with the original complaint? Yes. So, at approximately 1045, a citizen complainant contacted the ABRA hotline and filed a noise complaint, alleging that the establishment was playing music that could be heard within their residence. Uh, I then asked if they desired to substantiate that complaint. Uh, the citizen said they did. I then contacted uh, investigator Mitchell, who from my uh, previous tasking, I knew was within the area and could uh, substantiate the complaint. We always send two investigators, both for safety and also for uh, two-person integrity. We then uh, proceeded to the location uh, from the 8th Street, uh, excuse me, from the alley entrance or exit on the uh, south. We were able to hear some noise and then made the left turn onto 8th Street, uh, excuse me, correction, prior to responding to the location, I looked up whether the residence was residentially uh, uh, zoned. And I do that by using the DC zoning map. I type in the address that was provided by the resident uh, within the system, and it came back to be a residential property. That's important because uh, we cannot substantiate noise complaints from zones other than residential. So we then deployed to the, or responded to the area. We entered the complainant's apartment, walked down uh, about a half flight of steps, uh, proceeded to the rear of, of residence to a bedroom. We were able to hear noise, but not lyrics, bass, uh, then proceeded to the second room, which was uh, shared a wall and faced the uh, rear of the building. And again, could hear it louder. We then proceeded up a half flight of steps to the parking pad. Again, could hear it louder. We had the uh, complainant open his garage doors, continued to be louder, proceeded to the rear of the establishment. We couldn't 
enter the rear of the establishment because it was it was locked. It was a gate. There's a fire escape uh, that proceeds from the third floor of the establishment, and there's a door there. Based on my professional knowledge and experience, I believe the noise was either coming from that door, the side window, or from the roof of the establishment. Based on my professional knowledge and experience, I know that previously individuals had gone onto the roof of the building. And so I, I, I knew there was a the entrance exit, potentially a window up there as well. And so I okay. believe the noise was coming from one of those sources. We then uh, traveled to the front of the establishment and informed them that, that we had substantiated a noise complaint. And that I believe the noise was coming from either that third floor rear door, because again, I've been in the establishment and I know that there is no sound barrier between the interior of the establishment and that rear door or the window or on the third floor. So he acknowledged the complaint and we proceeded on other assignments. Okay, so investigator Fiorentine, uh, pulling you back to the complainant's home, uh, were you able to verify that there was no uh, music emanation coming from within uh, that apartment building? Correct, they, they did not have music playing, um, both the, the resident, there were two residents uh, there, uh, the apartment was quiet, uh, no TV was playing, uh, all doors and windows were closed uh, prior to us standing in the room in silence. And we, uh, both I and investigator Mitchell independently stated that we could hear noise um, both in both rooms. Okay. And at the specific location of 1909 9th Street, is Empire Lounge the only establishment there? Uh, there, there is a, another establishment on the first floor, um, but they are the only establishment uh, on the third floor that, that would go to the rear. Okay. And you identified the source of the noise coming above the first floor, correct? That is correct. We, we went right to the gate, the, the rear property line, and uh, it was clear it was, to us the noise was, or to me, that the noise was coming from either the door or window or from a, a entry point on the roof. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Bianco. Yes. Uh, so, Investigator Fiorentine, I... I understand from your testimony that you were you were the one who verified uh, the zoning of the of the residents. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And if I remember correctly, you verified it by using the interactive zoning map. That is correct. Okay. Um, so I did not see it in the report. What what zone does the residents lie in? Uh, I do not exactly recall, but it, it, it is uh, residential. 8th, 8th Street uh, is zoned residential. Okay. And what's your, what, what's your basis for that statement? Is it your recollection of the search or because there was a residence there? Uh, that is based on my recollection of the search. We okay. do not respond to uh, complainants who are, who desire to substantiate, who reside in uh, mixed use, uh, PDR, which is um, a, like a development or uh, a downtown zone. We only respond to residents that are residentially zoned um, because I don't wanna give the citizen the impression uh, that we can substantiate a noise complaint from their uh, location uh, when, when we are not uh, able to take enforcement action. Okay. Um, I also did not see in the report the address of the complaining residents. What is that address? I do not exactly recall 
the, the street address um, as a practice of we have not included the street address of anonymous complaints. No, I, I mean, I understand protecting the privacy concern, so it wouldn't appear in the report. I didn't mean to suggest it was incomplete. Um, mm -hmm. Just whether um, uh, you can now verify from notes or your recollection what that address is. Uh, I, I, I can't recall the, the exact address. I know it was. It was two, uh, two possibly three addresses south from Florida Avenue. Okay, and you said it was immediately across the alley, immediately behind nineteen oh nine. Correct. Um, roughly, it might have been Kitty Corner, where uh, two residences split. But from opening the garage door, um, I did not walk, uh, but uh, eight to 10 feet to the establishment. Sure. So you testified about how uh, you verify uh, whether the uh, um, complaining resident is in a residential zone and you don't, uh, I believe I had it correct, that you don't respond if it's in something other than a residential zone, correct? That is correct to okay. the, to the complaints. We will respond to the source of the noise. Um, but we will not respond to the, to a non residentially zoned. Okay. residence. okay, how do you treat mixed use zones for purposes of making that determination? Mixed use zones, um, do not, uh. Fall within residentially zones, and so we would not enter a mixed use zoned residents okay. we would go to the the if the complainant said this establishment is is making noise i will have a an investigator respond to the establishment but we do not enter residences within mixed use zones okay and do you recall from your review of the zoning map on the day that the complaint came in, whether the complaining residents and the licensee in this case are situated in the same zone? Uh, they are not. Uh, 19 is mixed use zoned. Uh, residential zoning does not start on 9th Street for uh, maybe three or four storefronts south. Eighth uh, Street uh, is residentially zoned, so there is a mixed use corridor. And um, there was some testimony um, about the methodology that you used to determine that sound was emanating from the licensee. So I want to go to that for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. I believe both you um, and um, uh, investigator Mitchell testified that uh, substantiating residential noise complaints are a two or sometimes three person job, correct? That is correct. Okay. And something that I have seen in other noise violation um, cases is one investigator will be inside of the residence, the other investigator will be outside of the establishment, and the two or sometimes three communicate about what is being played at the time the two parties are observing it. Are you, are you familiar with that procedure in your investigations? I am. Okay. And it's my understanding that that procedure was not followed in this particular instance. That is correct. Okay. Um, what, so there was some testimony. I think it was your testimony. Um, that there that the licensee that is the subject of this violation occupies the 2nd and 3rd floor of the building. 
um, but that there's a different establishment on the first floor of the building, correct? That is my understanding, correct. Okay. And do you know whether or not the establishment on the first floor of the building uh, was playing any music that night? If I recall correctly, it was not open. That the first floor did not have any patrons at the time. And that when the when the door opened, um, it was clear that that patrons were on the, the upper level, uh, up the, the flight of steps. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much, investigator. I don't have any more questions. Thank you, Mr. Bianco. Any questions by any board member? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Florentine, uh, thank you for attending today and your presentation. Um, so from reading the report and listening to the testimony, you did not enter the establishment either, correct? That is correct. But you did speak to, I think you said the owner? Uh, yes. And he committed that uh, he would check to see if windows were open or regardless, I think the language in your report said regardless, they would lower the volume? That is correct. Did they do that? It is my understanding. I, before we left the, uh, the complainant in the rear of his establishment, um, I said that we would obviously notify the establishment that they were making noise, but that they could call us if it continued to be loud, that, um, they, they could contact the hotline again, that, that we would, the hotline is staffed until four in the morning. They, the complainants did not. Well, and so, so it, based, me, based on the fact that the complainant did not, that they no longer heard the, the noise in their apartment. So just to help clarify your report, your report, maybe it does state, but I didn't read that it stated that you went with either the employee or the owner to the alley to the rear. Were you in the rear? Did, did, did you, just so it's clear, when you went, when you had the owner come down, was that in front of the establishment? Or was that in the rear? That, that was on 9th Street. Rear? I'm sorry? No, no, that was on 9th Street. That was in the front of the establishment. So you could have walked to the rear with the owner to confirm that the noise that you heard emulating was the noise from his facility, but you did not do that. Uh, no, sir, we, we, we did not. There was a uh, significant construction on 9th street. We, we, um, if I recall, we were, uh, uh, parked in a precarious situation. Uh, and so I, I wanted to make the notification and then depart the area for, for other assignments and to move the, the government vehicle. So you, you did not enter the establishment. That is correct. But that you claim you heard base, or at least the report says you could hear base inside of the complainant's apartment. That is correct. Uh, and we, we it, did it, hear music when the door, when the door opened to the establishment on Ninth Street, we did hear music. I mean, it was not, um, yes, we, we, we did hear music. And was, was the music from a DJ or a band? Uh, it was from either DJ or pre-recorded. Um, mm -hmm. Based on my, uh, again, I, uh, professional experience and knowledge of the establishment, I'm aware of where they position their DJ on, on that floor. I, I know the layout, the construction of the, of the floor, that there is no sound barrier uh, to that rear door. Um, there's a, there's a, 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 like a light interior door to a small room that has a window. But I know that if, if a gasket had failed on that exterior, that rear emergency door or door to the fire escape failed, noise, music would escape. And I'm also familiar with the roof that music would escape. If a door or window is not sealed, music would escape from the roof. 
And from your knowledge, and the music. Hmm? Go ahead. No, the, the music we heard from the entrance matched the similar genre of the music heard at the rear of the establishment. And so, so I felt no need to, to make entry. So your practice and experience is not to enter the establishment to confirm that the music you're hearing in the alley or in a residential zoned apartment is exactly the music that was emulating from that. So you don't usually go into establishments? Only if, if I can't ascertain the source. So, so for example, uh, uh, we'll take 9th Street. If I could not ascertain which of the establishments and has in previous experiences, we have not. We have had had to make entry into various establishments to determine who was playing what song because many of the establishments uh, play the same genre of music. And so it could be difficult. But in this instance, there was no difficulty. There was only one source of noise. And so we, we, I saw it as um, unnecessary and, and decided to commit to other operations. Would, would it have been helpful if you had gone in and determined that there were speakers that perhaps were facing the rear or in placed in a way that if they were to move them from your experience, perhaps it would be, it would be resolved the problem. Certainly in, in retrospect, given the fact that, that we had two subsequent violations that are alleged from that, that establishment, perhaps I, I could have um, mitigated those two further violations. But at the time, given the circumstances, I, I thought that notifying the owner of the violation uh, um, would suffice. Uh, in retrospect, I, I perhaps would have chosen differently. And you have, I don't think your report mentions it, but are there similar, no, let me back up. Do you know what endorsements this particular licensee has? I believe they have uh, entertainment, cover charge, holiday extension. Thank dancing. you. Thank, well, you you mentioned you mentioned uh, cover charge, and you mentioned just now dancing and um, mm. a DJ. Um, are you familiar with other establishments within that block that have similar endorsements that allow music? Yes, I am. Sir. And were they, open that evening? were they open that evening? Some were, some were not. Um, they, I, I can't recall exactly who was open and who was not open, but, but some were and then some were not. How close would you say um, the closest one that would have music to this establishment? If you don't know, that's fine, but. Uh, I, Within one storefront. Within so one storefront. Within, um, within 20 feet, they, there's probably another establishment similarly licensed. Did you walk in front of that one or to the rear of that one? Uh, yes. Uh, so the ambassador may be the closest. And I am familiar with the ambassador having um, a rear room for pool. They were not the source of the noise based on our observations to the rear and our observations to the front. Um, to the north, the next closest establishment would have been right spot, I believe, and they were not the source of the noise. The noise was not coming from a, uh, a northwesterly angle. It was coming from, uh, again, either the, the, that third floor fire escape door, window, or roof, based thank on you. the intensity of the noise. I want to thank you for, for your uh, answers to the questions, and thank you for your uh, report today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Grimes. Any other questions for any other board member? Mr. Bianca, any questions based on questions asked by the board? No, sir. Mr. Jordan, any 
Read it right. Uh, no, Mr. Chairperson. All right, thank you. Mr. Jordan, any, any other witness? Uh, no, Mr. Chairperson, no other witnesses. Does the government rest? Yes, the government rests. Mr. Bianco. Uh, no witnesses. Is the, gov is the government ready for closing? Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Go ahead, sir. Board members, the district today has met its statutory burden of substantial evidence that and proven that the licensee has played music heard within a neighboring establishment in violation of DC code 25725. Under 23 DCMR 1711.5, the applicant shall have the burden to prove by show of substantial evidence that the licensing action in the notice has been taken. You heard from both Investigator Mitchell and Investigator Fiorentine, who visited the establishment on that night. The investigators travel in pairs to ensure that they can verify the establishment producing noise. They identified Empire Lounge as the source of music heard within the complainant's uh, home that night. The investigators explained that they exhaustively traveled through complainant's home identifying the intensity of the noise as they be traveled closer and closer to the establishment. Therefore, the district has proven the charge in the notice of show cause and requests the board apply a penalty consistent with DC code section 25830. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Bianco. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As I mentioned at the outset, I'd like to submit written findings of fact and uh, proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law. If the board prefers, I could also give a brief closing orally, but I'm I'm glad to rest on my briefs. Well, I I was about to ask a question, and so if you if that's your if that is your call, sir, then um, then so be it. If you if if that's what you if you want us to rely on your brief, then. What, what, what ask, but I think what would be for the record, maybe you can just give a brief closing and, and um, we'll look forward to further um, legal arguments that I guess that you plan to make. Absolutely. Uh, glad to do that very briefly. So DC code 25725 uh, prohibits establishments from uh, emanating noises. Uh, using certain devices, mechanical devices, machines, apparatus, bells, horns, gongs, musical instruments, et cetera, that can be heard inside of residences except uh, in non-residentially zoned areas. Primarily, the government has, uh, well, the government's failed to meet its burden in this case, primarily because they have not put sufficient evidence in the record as to um, uh, the address of this particular residence such that the board can make a determin determination that this was a residential zone. Um, second, the government has not proved by clear and convincing evidence that this, that the noise at issue in this case was emanating specifically from the establishment. There were a number of failures here. There was not sufficient verification that the noise was not emanating from one of the immediately adjacent establishments um, into the residence uh, at issue in this case. Also um, of note, um, the government relies on assumption for what device or instrument, if any, um, was causing this noise. The testimony that you heard was that the investigators didn't even bother to enter. So they can't say that per the statutory requirement, the noise was coming from a musical instrument, a bell, a horn, a gong, an amplification device, because they didn't see it. Um, uh, an additional failure uh, in the government's case um, is that the statute allows for noise to be heard uh, in neighboring residences that is caused by um, opening of entrance and exit doors for the purposes of ingress and egress. And I think the, the government, the testimony put on by the government um, 
demonstrates that this is what is going on. Specifically, investigator Fiorentine um, put on testimony that the noise stopped when the rear exit door to the establishment was closed. Um, and uh, the last thing that I would like to mention about failures in the government's case is the investigators didn't even bother to follow the standard operating procedure to determine source of the noise. The testimony is that this is a two person job and the way um, uh, that it is supposed to be executed is with one person standing outside of the establishment, one person standing inside of the unit communicating as to specifically what music is being played to be identified by beat or lyrics. I'm sure the board has seen that in countless cases. That's the testimony in this case, only they didn't actually do it. Uh, the, te the testimony that we did here is the establishments in immediate proximity to the licensee in this case have similar types of endorsements on their licenses and play similar types of music that the licensee does. So for as a result of the material failures in the government's case, um, it's going to be our argument on the papers that they have not met their burden and the matter, um, the matter should be dismissed. In the alternative, if the board finds that the government did meet its burden, this is a secondary tier violation and it is warning eligible. So if the, if the board does find uh, a violation in this case, we would ask that the uh, um, appropriate sanction be a warning, although we are confident that you will find no violation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Biacco. All right, the record is now closed. And the, my next question, do the parties wish to file proposed findings of fact and conclusion of law or waive the right to do so? And I guess, Mr. Bianco, you've already stated that you wish to do so. All right, Mr. Jordan. Uh, yes, we will also. All right, since the parties have chosen to file proposed findings and fact and conclusion of law, then 90 days from the date when when the board receives proposed findings of facts and conclusion of law will the decision will be issued the the proposed findings of facts and conclusion of law they are due to the board within 30 days after receipt of the transcript the transcript will be emailed to the parties in approximately three weeks and of course if you change your mind you should um, inform opposing parties and then the board. All right, I want to thank everyone for their presentation today. And the board will take this matter on. All right, give me one minute, please. As chairperson of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board for the District of Columbia, in accordance with DC Official Code Section 2574B of the Open Meetings Act, I move that ABC Board hold a closed meeting for the purpose of seeking legal advice from our council on case number 21 CMP 00060 Empire Lounge, pursuant to DC Official Code Section 2574B4 of the Open Meeting Act. Meetings Act and deliberating upon case number 21 CMP 00060 Empire Lounge for the reasons cited in DC Official Code Section 2574B13 of the Open Meetings Act. Is there a second? Mr. Short, I second. Mr. Short, I second the motion. We will now have a roll call vote on the motion. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Rafi Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hansen. Jenny Hansen, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Grandis, I agree. As it appears that the motion has passed, I hereby give notice that ABC Board will, will recess this proceedings to hold a closed meeting in the sure. ABC Board conference room pursuant to Section 2574B13 of the Open Meeting Act. Again, I want to thank both parties for their presentation today. Um, the transcript will be available in approximately three weeks, 30 days after the transcripts, transcripts made available.
the the proposed final final effect and conclusion of law uh, should be provided, and we'll issue a, a decision within ninety days after that. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All right. We're now we have we're now at the end of our afternoon calendar, and so therefore I will close the hearing. I'll close. I'll adjourn for the day as chairperson of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board for the District of Columbia in accordance with Title III, Chapter 4 or 5, Office of Open Government. I move that ABC Board hold a closed meeting on March 16, 2022, for the purpose of discussing and hearing reports concerning ongoing or planned investigations of alleged criminal or civil misconduct or violations of law or regulations and seeking legal advice from our legal counsel on the board's investigative agenda, legal agenda, licensing agenda for for March 16th, 2022, as published in the DC Register on March 11th, 2022. Is there a second? Ms. Crockett seconds. Ms. Crockett, I second the motion. I will now take a roll call vote on the motion before us now that it has been properly second. Mr. Short. Mr. Short, I agree. Mr. Cato. Bobby Cato, I agree. Ms. Crockett. Bobby Crockett, I agree. Ms. Hanson. Jenny Hanson, I agree. Mr. Grandis. Edward Grandis, I agree. And Mr. Anderson, I agree. As it appears that the motion has passed, I hereby give notice that the ABC board will hold this aforementioned closed meeting. Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, notice will also be posted on the ABC board hearing room bulletin board, placed on the electronic calendar on Abra's website, and published in DC Register in as timely a manner as practical. We are now adjourned for the day. I would like to thank the members of the public for participate, participate in this hearing this afternoon. I'd also like to thank the ABC board members who have also actively participated. We are now adjourned for the day, and I now direct all board members to return to executive, executive session for further business. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.